Hi everyone, welcome back to the Spring Boot and Data JPA tutorial. In this video, we're going to discuss about writing a Data JPA query method using the exist by keyword. Let's begin. Now you can enroll into my premium courses on Udemy. I have three specific courses. The first one is Build Production Ready REST API with Spring Boot, which includes the Expense Tracker API. The second one is full stack development with React and Spring Boot that includes the React hooks. And the third one is JSP and Sourlets for beginners. All the links will be given in the description section of this video. If you join these courses through my link, then you will get a 90% discount. Now back to the video. So assume that there is a scenario, we need to save the user details to the database. And before we saving it to the database, first we need to check whether the given email address is already present in the database or not. We need to check the existence of the email address. So in order to achieve this, the data JPA has provided a query method and using the query method, we can check the existence of the given email address. Not only email address, you can consider any of the fields which we want to check the existence of it. So let's see how we can create the query method for that. So in order to create the query method to fulfill that requirement, we can make use of the exist by keyword followed by the field name. For example, exist by email, exist by username, exist by location. So this field name is derived from the entity class name. So the entity class name contains the fields or the properties and the exist by the keyword which is followed by the field name in which we want to check the existence of the value. So now let's look at the development steps for this. So the first step is to create the table and insert the few records into the database. We're going to create the database and the table and we will insert two records. The second step is to create a JPA entity class. We're going to create the JPA entity. The class name is user. We will add the annotations, entity, table, data, all orgs constructor, no arg argument constructors and we will create the properties ID, email and password. And we will add the ID annotation and generated value annotation for the ID property. The third step is to create the repository for the user entity. We will create a interface user repository that will extends the JPA repository. And we are going to define a method. We are going to create a query method to check the existence of the given email address. So it starts with exist by followed by the field name which is email exist by email this will takes the email address as a parameter it will return the boolean if it returns true then the email address is already present in the database if it returns false then the user the email address is not present inside the database pretty simple the last step is to create a rest endpoint to save the user details we're going to create a controller, user controller. We will auto wire the user repository and we will create a rest endpoint. We will call the post mapping annotation and we will provide the URI slash save. And inside this, inside the if condition, we're going to call the repository method exist by email and we will pass the email address that the user is passing. If the, if this method returns true, then we will throw the runtime exception. We will, provide the message email is already exist. Otherwise, we are going to save the details to the database. Okay, these are the development steps. Now let's jump to the STS IDE and write a code for this. Okay, I'm inside the STS IDE. I have already created a project Spring Data JPA and inside the pom.xml, I have added the dependencies, which is starter data JPA, starter web dependency and the Spring Boot dev tools, MySQL connector, Lombok, and the Spring Boot starter test. I have created a few packages, controller, entity, and repository. And inside the application or properties, I have already configured the data source. I have provided the JDBC URL with a database name demo DB, the username, and the password. Now let's go ahead and create an entity. I will call this user. Let's quickly add the annotations at entity 
I will provide the table name which is TVL underscore users. I will add the data annotation. I will also add the all argument constructor and no argument constructor. Inside this, I will create a fields private long ID, private string email, private string password. I will quickly add the ID annotation for the ID property and also the generated value. We will add the strategy strategy generated type dot identity so let's save this so now we have created the entity class which is mapped to the database table which is tbl underscore users the next we need to create a repository inside the repository package let's create an interface let's call this user repository it should extend the JPA repository click finish we need to provide the entity name which is user and the primary key type which is long we don't need to add the repository annotation which is optional and inside this we're going to create a query method it all starts with exists by exists by and we're going to provide the exist by email and we will pass the email address as a parameter this will return boolean so let's save this so now we have created the repository and we have defined the query method to check the existence of the email address the last step is to create the controller let's call this user controller let's add the annotation rest controller I'm going to create a method public this is going to return the response entity response entity of user save user let's add the annotation post mapping we will provide the uri slash save let me import the user from the entity package and we're going to make use of the request body to map the http request to the user entity user let's call this user inside this let's make use of the user repository first let's auto wire the user repository private user repository let's call this user repository let's add auto wired annotation inside this we're going to write a if condition if we're going to make use of the user repository dot exists by email and to this we will pass the email address user dot get email and if this returns true then we know that the email address is already present inside the database we are going to throw a runtime exception runtime exception and we will pass the message email is already present otherwise we are going to save the user details to the database so let's return new response entity of user type and we're going to make use of the user repository to call the repository method which is save and to this we will pass the user object and we will pass the http status which is created so let's save this so now we have created the rest endpoint all we need to do is we need to test the api let's go to the postman and first of all, if you go to the database, let me execute this statement. Let me select this database. 
now let's execute the query you can see now we have a two email address bhushan at example.com bharat at example.com let's try to insert the first email address which is bhushan at example.com and let's see what will happen let's go to the postman let's change this to post localhost colon 800 slash save go to body choose raw choose json email address which is bushan at example.com password 12345 the moment we click on this send it will throw the internal server error you can see the runtime exception email is already present if you go to the sts you can check that runtime exception email is already present super now let's go to the postman let's change this to sharat click send the record will be saved to the database so this is all about the exist by email this is all about using the exist by keyword so in case if you want to check the existence of any value in a given column then you can use the exist by keyword which is provided by the data jpa i hope you understand something out of this video thank you so much for watching i will see you in the next video